Hey friends, Wynn Reagan, Associate Director for the Center for Worship and the Arts here with my good friend, David Bailey. Uh, I've introduced him several times. If you don't know who David Bailey is, you need to go check out Erebon and check out Urban Doxology. But today I'm talking with David about songwriting. We're continuing our conversation, thinking about songwriting and how to become better songwriters. Yeah. So David, our question today, there are a lot of people. I mean, there are a lot of people writing worship songs, a lot of amazing people writing yeah. amazing worship songs. Yet still, we always need to ask that question. What kinds of worship songs do we need? What yeah. kinds of worship songs does the church need, especially in our current age and season? What do you think? So, I mean, I'm going to steal a couple of things from the Urban Doxology playbook. Um, we need songs that are Trinitarian, songs mm. that talk about the Father, the Son, and not just the Holy Bible. It's actually the <laughs> Holy Spirit, right? Yes, right? Like, amen. I think, like... <laughs> Uh, you don't know through a lot of our worship songs that we actually believe that God's one in three persons. And so we, we, we don't really understand about the power of the Holy Spirit and how the Spirit's at work. And so that's one of the things. We talk about the Father. We talk about the Son. We don't talk about uh, the Holy Spirit. So we try to be Trinitarian in our songwriting. Um, we also need songs from the Old Testament. Uh, <laughs> like, like, And I think one of the reasons why you could have um, certain parts of the body of Christ that feel like justice is an add on mm. or like work of reconciliation or just understanding like issues of oppression and, and, and kind of justice oriented issues is because they read Genesis three as, uh, as the, the Bible for them starts at Genesis three, that were sinners <laughs> and it doesn't actually start at Genesis one yeah. where it's whole or if we read Genesis one and two, it's like a, it's like the prequel to the real story of mm. Genesis three, right? <laughs> and so we actually need to see the world as whole, good, and beautiful, and then it was mm. broken. But then a lot of times people do the fall, they do creation, they do the fall, and then they skip to Jesus and redemption. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And really, it's not just like most folks, like in particular in our worship space, it tends to be fall and redemption is are what we're talking about. Yep. But really, the story is creation, fall, God's people, redemption, and restoration. And so it's like redemption is, is looking like God started to redeem, like redemption started through God's people in Israel. Mm. And then there was a lot of failure that happened in that space, a lot of ratchet stuff that was happening in yeah. that space. And then there was a need for a Messiah named Jesus to redeem like these people that God started this process of redemption, but it wasn't completed. And then it started the process of like uh, towards restoration is like new creation perspective. And so, you know, most of our worship songs are dealing with being a sinners, which I'm all about. We are sinners, yeah. you yeah. know, and like, yeah. that's like, we don't need to get rid of that. Right. No. <laughs> uh, we, we definitely need Jesus. We're not going to do this on Absolutely. our own. We definitely need redemption. But, but I think songs about creation, Hmm. songs about God redeeming through God's people and, and, and like just pick a book in the Bible in the yeah. Old Testament, right? Like if you want to talk about faith or you want to talk about grace, you want to talk about love, just pick a genre, any, any book in the Old Testament and just try to write us a thing out of like <laughs> Nahum, you know, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. try to write a thing out of Jonah or try to write out of Ruth or Esther, you know, like, and just kind of see what you come up with out of this perspective and then like new creation, I think is another mm. uh, um, topic that we need more songs written about. That's great. It's great. I mean, it makes me think even, I mean, think about the story of redemption. I mean, I mean, you know, of course it starts at the beginning and you have the curse given to Adam and Eve, yeah. but yet Eve, you know, the heel will crush the snake's head. You think about Abraham who's given this covenant promise, like your descendants will be more than these stars and yeah. from, from you is going to come, right? The yes. Messiah. So Jesus is a person as an individual, but Jesus is also part of a people yes. uh, that's been stretched over time and space. So. Yes. And, and, and I think this is another thing you even thought about, like with Eve, God is not, uh, women are part of the reflection of the image of God. Yes. So I think about things of like in him, I'm, in, in God, we move uh, and have our very existence. It's, it's, it's an image of a womb, right? Mm, mm -hmm. So like what, like what, a, we oftentimes have a conversation about what can women do 
that men can do or can't do, right? Like, 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 <laughs> and that ends up being like, and I just think that's a wrong conversation to have. Mm. I think the conversation we need to have is like, what is the feminine image of God? Mm. Where are feminine like images of God? So there's like God represented as a mother, mm-hmm. God's represented as a midwife, God mm-hmm. is represented as a mourner, um, God um, is uh, um, represented as a mother eagle, and 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 even kind of ideas of protection. And a kind of maternal way of protection, and so, you know, I think I think these are biblical. Like, I I don't think we need to make stuff up. I think right. we can like look at the text. <laughs> yeah. And I think there's like a lot to explore. It's feminine images of God because women are made in the image of God, and we need to sing. I mean, and I think it's Psalm um, Psalms one thirty one says, "As a weaned child, mm-hmm. like I draw close to you." And so, like, what are some gifts in that particular space that you could uh, uh, um, explore who God is? And what does it look like to rest in a mother's arm, right? Mm. Like that, I mean. Yes. I mean, that seems like that's, that, that's kind of what Psalms 131 is about, right? Yep. So, you know, I think there's a lot to explore in the text that we can go for. <laughs>